Why are birds and dinosaurs so stinking similar if they're not related? Hi, I'm Jonathan Guzman. I'm from the YouTube channel Guzman1611. And here we're going to answer the question, why are birds and dinosaurs so similar if they're not related? I'm a creationist, I'm a young earth creationist, and I believe that dinosaurs and birds, that there's a very distinct discontinuity between the two groups, that God created birds on day five and that God created probably most dinosaurs on day six. This is how I would generalize things within creation week. This is not, I'm going to make, end up making a video one of these days showing why this is kind of a bad overall gener generalization. So why are birds and dinosaurs so similar? Before I answer that question, I want to, I want you to keep this in mind. God created different organisms, right? God created different things throughout days five through six, right? God created different organisms and different life forms. Each life form is obviously going to be more similar to another life form than a, from another, right? For example, we are more similar to dogs than we are to fish, right? I, I think anybody could. Actually, Dr. Matthew McLean wrote uh, an article for the New Creation blog. Uh, link is in the description if you'd like to read that. It actually talks about why different organisms look differently from others and more similarly to others. This is the same reason why we have birds looking so similar to dinosaurs. Birds happen to look more similar to dinosaurs than they do to other things because of this overall pattern and generalization in God's creation. God created things, but he also created a pattern for those things and those things follow a pattern. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about why birds and dinosaurs are so similar. It kind of is true that birds and dinosaurs are similar, but there's kind of a lot of discontinuity between the two also. I'm gonna show you uh, a graph here. This is a figure from the Duran paper in 2018, Duran et al. Um, dinosaur, uh, the barominology of dinosauria. This shows maniraptor forms. So this includes your theropod dinosaurs and then your extant avialans if you don't think that birds are dinosaurs. Whatever. Here is our figure, but right here we have our 1, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? So this is an actually a wishbone pattern. And if you watch my interview with Dr. Duran, he said this. I see, I don't know what that is, Garudimimus. Okay, we have Shuvia Garudimus, here. Garudimimus, got Shuvia, uh-huh. Ornithalestes, Synraptor, uh -huh, yeah. T-Rexes, or... Yeah, T Rex is in here. Gorgon. Okay. Yeah, so there's an out group. Notice the little out group sign right there. Right. So you're in an out group, right? Okay. And so yeah. I see Cadipteryx, Cedipati, uh, -huh. uh Sornis. I still don't know how to pronounce that. I should. Okay. Cadipteryx. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we have my favorite group. Okay. Microraptor. Okay. Velociraptor. Microraptors. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then up here we have, I don't know what this is. Yishianornis. Yeah, Nornis. Okay. Ornis, okay. Uh, <laughs> we have yeah, Gallus. Let me find those two in my paper. So we have the chicken here, also, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Gallus. Uh, yeah. Okay, yep. so this is interesting. So we have the the Manoraptorans pretty separated from from Gallus, and and uh, I'm assuming that these are bas or not basal, but uh, extant birds up here. Extant, exactly. Yes. So that's interesting. We do have we do have a bit of discontinuity here. They're pretty far apart. That's right. So that's right. And notice we have a little bit of a wishbone there too. Pretty interesting about this diagram. So as you you're, you're looking at some of the spaces, right? Okay. But there's something else that's really interesting here. Um, we have those little groups, right? Mm -hmm. And notice I have those numbers on there. Okay. Those numbers are the order that these groups appear in the fossil record. Huh. Okay. Now, if I expected those to have one common ancestor that evolve in sequence, mm -hmm. what would you expect for the numbers? I would expect them to be in this order that it would look like it would be a transition from one organism to another. Right. One, two, three, right. four, five, six, right? Right. 
What do you see? I see chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, insult my work like that. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I meant we said this. But anyway, so you see some chaos here, right? And it actually comes out in a, it's very curious. It comes out in a wishbone pattern. Your number six, you have extant birds. Some of your extant birds, you have gallus, gallus in here. That's your modern chicken, etc. You have your out group, which includes Despletosaurus, Tarbosaurus, Synraptor, Allosaurus, and Dialong. They're all kind of grouping together because they're very distant from these other groups. Um, Haplochiris, Shuvia, etc. You also have your Sinosaur, uh, you have your Sinornithoides, you have your Cadipteryx, Cidipati, um, you have uh, Conchoraptor, you have uh, Confuciusornis, Archaeopteryx, Sankyarnis, Jehalornis, uh, Sankyarnis, more bird-like dinosaurs, right? You have your, uh, let's look here, you have your Confuciusornis, right? You have your Arche Archaeopteryx. They're grouping kind of distantly from modern birds. They're actually, if you look here, uh, just eyeballing it, it looks like they're actually grouping more closely to the outgroup than they are to uh, to, the, to, to, to modern birds, uh, extant birds. So is the question, why are birds so similar to dinosaurs really still valid? The answer is yes, because even though these, these group separately, uh, and distinctly in baromenological uh, analyses, the question still remains, why are they so similar morphologically? Why do some dinosaurs look like birds? And why do some birds look like dinosaurs? And why do dinosaurs have the same traits uh, as birds? Uh, some, some of the same traits as birds. And why do, some, why do all birds share the defining traits that dinosaurs have? And here's what I think, okay? And I propose this I say propose as if it's some scientific hypothesis. Um, but I said in my original presentation uh, that I gave at the Revival Studios, I said that why are dinosaurs so similar? I said this quote, God created different things to fulfill a different purpose. And God may reuse a design present in one animal for another animal for the sake of that animal's survival. Also, small dinosaurs could have been faced with a similar ecological niche as quote unquote basal birds causing them to evolve, quote unquote, similar features that allowed them to take advantage of that niche. This is known as convergent evolution. And so I said this without knowing any of the literature that was published on this. I had not read a single article in the creationist literature on why this, why this phenomenon is as it is. Um, but I did write this and I said, it's probably convergent evolution, right? But then a paper that I actually cited in that presentation I had apparently skimmed right over this part and I didn't realize it until I was preparing for my debate with Jackson Rowe, link is in the description. And I reread this paper, it's uh, by Xu and colleagues on archaeopteryx-like theropod from China and the origin of ABLA. And I think this may support my hypothesis. I, they say, quote, Xiaotingya possesses salient anatomical features also seen in different para-avian taxa, further highlighting the phenomenon of widespread homoplasy. This phenomenon is also seen in some other major transitions, including the origins of major mammalian groups and creates difficulties in recovering robust phylogenies. And so they're saying that Xiaotingya, one specific, very, very specific example, exhibits a uh, very clear signs of homoplasy, which is traits developed, evolved from convergent evolution. This is in contrast to synapomorphy, which are morphologies that two taxa share uh, because they uh, inherited it from a common ancestor. And so this seems to support my hypothesis. Now, obviously this is just one example of of many that I'm gonna need if, if I'm going to support my hypothesis. And so that's my answer to why dinosaurs and birds are so similar to each other. And it's because there's a greater pattern in God's creation. They're not really that similar, even though they kind of are. And those that are really similar, like the small theropod dinosaurs that look a lot like birds and have feathers and stuff like that, that crazy stuff, that those, uh, they evolved those convergently, if you will. And maybe God created them with feathers and stuff like that. And, and then they just, evolved into their own ecological niche and they 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 survived there and further diversified and speciated from there and so that's my three answers to the question why are dinosaurs 
so similar to birds. If you like this video, I hope you did. Uh, like it if you think I earned it. Subscribe, uh, share the video, comment, do all that good stuff. Um, uh, check out my other videos that I have. Check out my interview with Dr. Duran. Link is in the description or you can click this video right here to watch that. Here's a playlist so, with some other interesting interviews that I've done with other scientists and stuff. Go check it out. I'm Jonathan Guzman. I'll see you next time.